Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, videos on the Lotus have been a little bit thin on the ground recently, uh, for one reason or another. Uh, but uh, I will be cracking on with the glass fibre repairs very soon, and you'll see quite a few videos covering that. Um, but in the meantime, I thought I'd uh, uh, remove the gearbox and the prop shaft. Uh, I will be uh, removing the diff as well and the rear suspension soon. Uh, and the diff will need a rebuild. Uh, but the gearbox uh, was a little, and is, a little bit uh, leaky despite uh, having uh, a full rebuild uh, not so long ago um, in mileage terms. Uh, so I thought I'd just give you a quick overview of this gearbox and how not to go about sealing it. Okay, let's have a look at what was done uh, uh, in the rebuild and then I'll show you the gearbox. Okay, here is the invoice from the work that was done back in uh, July of 2005 and the mileage at that date was 8871 uh, or 108,000 I should say. Um, it's since that time and it's been used every year. I've got all the MOTs to back that up. Uh, it's covered since then 1300 miles and you can see what was done on the car here. Uh, it's had uh, synchros replaced, all the bearings. Uh, it's also had a clutch fitted and a new clutch master cylinder and also the UJs on the uh, a prop shaft and as you can see all this work came to a whopping £1,891 which seems quite a lot of money for a gearbox refurbish. So yeah quite a bit of money to spend on a gearbox rebuild and to be honest I've had a look inside and it, it all looks very good. Uh, but there's an old saying, isn't there? Why, sp why spoil the chip for a nape of the tar? And in this case, it's a tube of silicon sealant. Um, although, you shouldn't use silicon sealant. Anyway, let's have a look uh, at uh, the sealing on this unit and why I'm not too chuffed about it. Here we have the gearbox, and it's uh, the markings on the gearbox, although they're upside down. There, a 2821E, which uh, signifies that it's a 2000E gearbox, and it's also got uh, some other markings there 7008 D, and also on the tailpiece, it's got uh, 2821E and 7A040 plus IF3, sorry, yeah, IF3, and also IF3 on the uh, gearbox itself. So I'll need to find out uh, what those markings exactly mean uh, and it's probably a year and manufacture date. Uh, anyway, whether this is the original gearbox, I suspect it is. But anyway, uh, let's get back to why I've decided to make this video and that is how not to seal your gearbox. And you can see remnants of silicon sealant here and also here. And it's everywhere. I mean, you can see plastered around here and on this ceiling joint down here. And also when I took the gearbox uh, um, bell housing off, it was covered here. Now this bolt here actually goes into the gearbox and you need to make sure that that's properly sealed. Uh, otherwise it will leak like uh, anything. Anyway, what I'll, oh, before I, take the tops off to have a look inside. This is the reverse gear um, electric feed to the uh, um, reversing lights um, and as you can see it's been a bit um, bodged. Um, I'm not surprised on this car to be honest but uh, I'll uh, rectify that when it goes back in. 
So let's take the uh, covers off and have a look inside. And remember not to drop these washers inside there, which I did the other day when I first took it apart to have a look at it. Um, luckily I managed to retrieve it. I'm glad it didn't go into here, which would have been a bit of a nightmare. But anyway, as you can see, this actually goes into the tail shaft and on the bottom of each bolt there's a chunk of silicon sealant. And although I suspect it ain't going to do much damage in there, you don't want anything in your gears. So again, yeah, see on the bottom of there. So carefully lift that off. And you can see all the silicon that's oozed out. God knows how much they put on it and all that could just drop into there and you've got still got the paper gasket there which needs to come off obviously i'll put that to one side a bit and take this one off now these these actual bolts don't go into the uh, gearbox casting itself it's on this flange on the outside so there's no danger of anything dropping off the bottom of the bolts in this case. However, as you can see on the inside, that could easily fall off into the gears. And you don't really want that, do we? One thing you do have to take care of when you're removing this top cover is that those springs there in the little recesses do not fall into the gearbox. And those three springs sit on these ball bearings here. Now this is called a three rail uh, gearbox and as you can see there are three selector rails here and that's why. Anyway, um, I don't know how well you can see in there. I know you can't see a lot in there but it, it is nice and clean as you'd expect. and. Uh, I actually had to pick pieces of silicon sealant out of there when I took the top cover off for the first time. Um, so anyway, onto, onto the ceiling. Um, you really shouldn't use silicon sealant. There's lots of um, uh, different types of sealant out there and uh, you can speak to 10 people and each one will give you a different uh, um, type of sealant that they've used and recommend. So I'll do a bit more research on that and find out the best type of uh, sealant to use. But regardless of that fact, when you're actually putting the sealant on, you only need a tiny smear uh, to, uh, to give you a good seal. And I've talked to people who have uh, done just that and don't have any problems with leaks. So we'll have to see how we get on with that one. But even the sump plug has got uh, sealant on it to uh, give a sealant and give a good seal rather and that hasn't worked there, there is leak of oil leakage of oil from the uh, from the sump plug anyway i know it's not a long video or maybe not a particularly interesting video but i just thought i'd uh, show you how this gearbox uh, cost quite a bit of money to have refurbished and the fact that they sport the job i presume it was um, the people that did it now a little bit more on that in that it's quite a reputable company that uh, deals and repairs lotuses and have done for many years uh, and i've seen some of their work before and it is top notch and i suspect that this 
uh, gearbox may have been farmed out to an independent um, gearbox in, in exclamation marks specialist and that didn't do a particularly good job of the sealing. I've driven the car obviously and the gears seem to work very good. Um, anyway, I'm rambling now. So what I'll do in a, in a follow-up video to this is uh, put on new seals and make sure they're properly sealed with the appropriate sealant. So that's, that's another video. Another thing I did notice when I was driving the car, especially when it gets to above around about 30 miles an hour, is that the speedo starts flickering all over the place. And here's the speedo drive and the cable. Now I've looked at the cable and all the, uh, the spline is all good, it's not worn and certainly at the other end is the same. Um, so I'm just wondering whether there's something wrong here or at the speedo end and I think uh, that deserves a little bit more investigation. Okay, at some point in the future I will be doing an update on this video um, uh, when I select the appropriate sealant and uh, replace all the gaskets and sort out the speedo drive and what the problem is there. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for watching. It's only been a short video this one, um, but I just thought I'd point out um, what I see is a little bit of a, another bodge on this car and the fact that uh, the guy who uh, had the car before me he paid all that money out to have the job done. And I'm not saying the internals aren't done properly. Uh, it drives and it changes gear fine. Um, but it's just the finishing touches. Um, I'll probably be repainting this as well uh, in the original colour, which I suspect is black uh, by the look of it. So, yeah, I'm waffling on now. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. There'll be a lot more videos to come and the next video will probably, almost certainly, be on the body repairs. So, goodbye.